Hi everybody, Richard Hamm today here talking about Fantastica, a uh, new deck building adventure game. Uh, just came out um, from its Kickstarter run. I imagine it'll be going wider soon because it's a very, very cool game from Alpha, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Siergent, Siegert, Alf Siegert probably, who uh, previously did uh, Trollhalla and uh, Road to Canterbury, both of which were excellent little games. And this, I would actually say, is his best yet. Uh, fantastic little game that basically you can almost kind of think of this as you know uh, the Mage Knight deck building game, but really streamlined, just you know very straightforward, uh, very uh, very fast, very elegant, very fun to play um, without a lot of heavy lifting. Um, so let's just go right ahead and jump into it. I have set up the board with um, the randomly placed um, regions or lands, whatever you want to call them, and also with the, I guess you could call them stores, for lack of a better term. This is a place where you can go and get new quests, you can get artifacts here, or you can actually hire creatures, um, and there's two of them in each of these six lands. Jen and I are both starting here in the hills, although you could start anywhere. I just kind of put us both together. Um, there's a couple of quests that we could be uh, trying to do out on the board, um, and each of us has our own quest as well. My starting personal quest is introducing Entertaining, entertaining the castle cats of Lady Bombastica, uh, right there. There's a lot of uh, humor and and um, you know and, and imagination and all this stuff. Jen, she needs to ignite the eleven huge pipes for the hovels of hill giants, which means she needs um, two flames, while I need um, two magic wands. And the other quests that are out here uh, need a couple of nets or spider webs. Need a couple of teeth, which is really kind of like a bitey, attacky thing. But I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And like I said, it is a deck builder game. So uh, here's my deck. Here's where my discard will be. I've got a few special powers. I've got three bucks or gems, and let's just go ahead and start playing. So the first thing that happens on the Fantastica turn summary is we replenish the board, which means um, I have to bring out creatures that block off all these different regions. So from the creature deck, we just start drawing them. There's a baby dragon, which has a gem, so he gets a little gem to start with. A Some spiders also get a gem. Uh, more spiders, another gem. A knight. Wow, lots of gems, right from the get-go. Uh, an Enchantress, no gem there. A Billy Goat, and then finally in the middle we've got a Witch! Burn her! Okay, so the, uh, we have completed the first stage of replenishing the board. Second stage, I'm going to go first, um, which means I'm going to choose one turn action, one of these three things. I could go adventuring, I could um, visit a statue, or which is basically means I can go shopping. I can go to in this. I can go to the uh, creature shop or visit a statue, as it says. Or I could complete a quest. And also um, during a turn, I have several um, kind of free actions. I only get to do one of these three things, but I can do as many as I want of commit cards to quest, use special powers on cards, use treasure tokens, use artifact tokens. So, um, but let's actually find out what I've got in my hand. One, two. Three, four, five. Let us look at my starting hand of five cards. Um, I've got a peaceful dragon, which is not good. Uh, a toothbrush, a net, a cat, and a broom. So, yeah, sorry about the glare there. Let's try and get that off. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the peaceful dragon. This is the junk clutter card. Um, both Jen and I started with one of these in our deck. Um, they're a peaceful dragon. That's far too peaceful to quest or subdue other creatures. So they just basically take up space. You can get rid of them. You definitely want to do it. Um, but anyway, so since he can't do anything for me, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my discard pile and ignore it. And then look at the rest of my hand, where I've got a um, a broom a cat, a net, and a toothbrush. Now the words don't really matter. What really matters is these icons. The toothbrush, which counts as a magic wand. The net, which counts as an, uh, it's a kind of spiderweb net thing. The cat tooth, uh, and the broom, which is actually a broom. Now, actually, I'm gonna stop and talk about this for a second. You know, the sense of whimsy this game has. Now, I'm actually carrying around a toothbrush, but in my imagination, it's a magic wand. Uh, there's actually a background story about how some strange old man invited you to his house and gave you a rucksack, and when you stepped outside, you were in this fantastical place, just you and your dog. Um, and you know, in the rucksack were all these things like um, toothbrushes, which you know have magical properties. I like to think of the game as it's almost kind of like you know we have this childlike imagination. We're running around in a forest, pretending to have adventures, and saying, "My toothbrush will protect me." And I think a spatula is a sword and stuff like that. But it doesn't really matter. That's just all thematic flavor. The important thing is I've got a a uh, magic wand, a broom, a uh, tooth, or bite, or attack, or whatever you want to call it, and a net. 
And with these four cards, because remember I had, a, I had my junk card as well, with these four cards I can either go adventuring, um, visit a statue, which would be the creature statue, or complete a quest. Now, um, to complete the quest, like here I need two magic wands, I only have one. Here I need uh, two nets, I've only got one. So I'm going to really do adventuring right now. So what we do is we look around at the creatures that are surrounding me. This baby dragon, I would need a sword to take him out. These spiders, I'd need a tooth. This witch, I would need a bucket of water, because um, obviously witches don't like water, everybody knows that. And as it stands right now, I do have a tooth, or I just have a tooth. So I can't um, go this way or this way, because I don't have a sword or a bucket. Um, but I've got a tooth, which means I can go this way. Um, and unfortunately, then I'd hit a dead end, because then there's another tooth right there. Um, which means this is not actually the most efficient turn, because what you want to do is um, you want to be able to draw cards that would let you actually take out several creatures in a row. For instance, if I had a sword, I have a net, um, and if, say if I had a sword, a net, and a club, I could play my sword here, get that baby dragon, then the billy goat, and then the club. Um, you know, and then in one turn, I have added three cards to my discard pile, which means I'll be able to use them in future turns. Now, as it stands right now, the draw I had, um, really, I could, I, could, I could take out these spiders by using my tooth, but that would be about it. Um, and instead, I think I'm actually going to not uh, do an adventure this turn, because I didn't get the greatest draw on my first um, hand, or at least not one that matches where I am in the world. Instead, I'm going to do um, action number two. I'm going to visit a statue. Um, I am at the statue of uh, you know, this kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, griffin type uh, creature, which means I can do one of three things at this statue. I can go shopping, which means I draw three cards from the uh, creature, from the beast bazaar, and then I get to buy one of them with my money. Or if I want, I can, um, what can I do? I can pay money to teleport to the other place. Um, you know, which means maybe I can set myself for a future turn because I'm surrounded by monsters I can deal with better. Or I can pay money to trash cards, to remove um, cards from the game so I can start thinning out my deck because this is a deck builder. Now I'm just going to actually, um, at, you know, here I'm going to actually spend some money and go shopping at the Beast Bazaar. So I'm using an action which I get to draw three cards and let's see what I get. One, two, three. And there is a griffin, a, uh, a griffin, a giant spider and a dragon. Now, I got you. Um, each of these cost me three bucks. I have three bucks. I'm going to spend all my money on it, and I'm going to buy one of them. Let's see. Now, the dragon um, gives me two flame for, fi for dealing with quests, and, um, you know, which Jen would really like because her quest needs two flames. But, um, let's see, that's not particularly interesting to me, although it also has the special benefit of the key, which I'll talk about later. The griffin gives me two swords. The spider gives me two webs. Hmm. And since there's this forest, this forest quest over here, I have to go to the forest and use two webs to repair the swing of the tyrannical child Tyrell. I think I'm going to take this spider because it could actually help me out doing that quest. So I bought the spider, I put it in my discard, and these uh, other cards I didn't buy, they just go back face up to the bottom of the pile, you know, effectively a discard pile of sorts. So that was my turn. Um, I did my one action, which was go shopping. And um, now at the end of my turn, I can draw. I have to draw back up to five at the end of my turn. But before I do that, I can discard any of these cards if I don't want them. So um, you know, you have a lot more hand management than you do in, say, Dominion, where every turn you're thinking about: Do I want to hold on to these for the next turn, or do I want to dump them so I can start digging through my deck to get other stuff? Let's see. And considering that now, um, you know, I'm going to want to get to the forest because I've got this double web thing, which means I can come up to the forest. And the forest is over here, and I'm over here. So I'm eventually going to want to, you know. You know, depending on what Jen does, I might want to get a bucket and a club to be able to go this way, or a sword and a web to go this way. I think I'm going to hold on to my web, um, you know, so I can start thinking about going that way. And I'm going to discard these other ones, and hopefully um, next turn I'll be able to get the sword so I can make it over to the forest. Um, so that means I'm only holding on to one card, and at the end of my turn I'll draw one. And I got it. I got my spatula, or sword. Two. And my dog, hooray! Three. Four. So this will be my hand for next turn. But uh, let's go to Jen's turn right now. So she's in the same situation as me. She's going to draw five cards. Let's see what she gets. Uh, helmet, which is, has the icon of the uh, little billy goat for butting heads with people. Uh, baseball bat, which looks like a club. A, um, you know, the, the same tooth that I had, three. Um, a toothbrush, four. And a spatula. So Jen kind of got a similar, you know, random mix of stuff. Let's see if she can adventure. Um, now. 
Uh, let's see, so she's got a sword, which needs to go this way, but then she'd hit a dead end because she didn't get the uh, net. She didn't get a buck chango that way. She can get a tooth and then another tooth. So again, neither of us got a particularly good starting draw. Um, but because I want to actually show you doing an adventure, Jen's going to say, ah, the heck with that. I'm going to start doing some adventures. Um, let's see. What is she going to do? Does she want to go? You know, um, because she's got this quest where she needs flame, she wants to take out this baby dragon, which will give her flame, um, which she can then maybe help her do her quest later. So she's going to decide to go this way, which means she takes her mighty spatula and puts it on the baby dragon and walks over here. Now, again, if she had a net, she could then keep going and you know use the net to take out the billy goat and get to the forest, but she didn't. So basically, um, she has now gathered one gem, so she's got four bucks now, and both these cards go into her discard pile. Um, and now she's got more flame that would help her out with her thing. And now she's got the same situation as me. Um, you know, at the end of her turn, she could uh, discard this stuff or hold on to it for the next turn, and which means she'd only draw one card. Um, let's see. Now. Um, Hmm, I think, yeah, with that, she's just going to hold on to all four and see what she gets. And she got a, the wardrobe changing, her special card, which she'll be able to use next turn. So her turn is over. Now it's my turn, um, and the first thing you always do is you replenish the board. So I'm going to come here, and since Jen um, you know, cleared out a creature, um, a new creature showed up, an enchantress, which you need to have a club to get past. But if you do defeat the enchantress, um, you'll get a, um, another magic wand, which could help out with quests. Um, which is actually nice for me, because remember, I want magic wands. Um, and also the special ability to create more peaceful dragons. But, so now we look at my um, hand of five again. What have I got? Oh. Um, well, first of all, I've got my dog. Now my dog has the um, uh, shovel ability, which currently there's nothing out on the board that would benefit from the shovel. But he also has a special ability. If I want to discard him, I can use his special ability right now, which is give me a gem, which I'll do. I'm going to discard him to get a gem, which gives me back to one, because I spent all my money last time, and now this leaves me with the rest of my stuff. I can't buy anything, but, and unfortunately, since Jen went this way, she took out the, um, remember I was saving up, and I was so happy because I had my sword and my net, I was going to be able to go, sword, net, and I was going to be able to get over to the forest where I wanted to be, but then Jen went that way, and so now there's a club, and I don't have a club. So i got to ask myself, what do I want to do now? Um, you know, and this is constantly, you know, you're always like making plans, but then the other player takes the, uh, you know, the path you want to go, and so you're always having to respond. Let's see. Now, I really do want to get over to that forest um, before my, um, you know, my green giant spider comes up, because when my spider comes up, I want to be over to the forest so I can do this quest. Um, but I don't have to do it right away, because, you know, I've still got at least one more turn before I, um, you know, start reshuffling. So, oh, what should I do? Um... Uh, Gosh darn it. Yeah, Jen kind of left me high and dry here. Mm. Now, I've got some other stuff I could do. And in fact, no, I'm not going to... Oof. Darn it, what a slow start. This is not particularly great at all. Um, Jim was actually very wise to take that little baby jump, because now I'm stuck. Um, I think... Uh, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. I only have one gem. And I can't complete a quest. So I think this turn is going to be kind of a no-go for me. I'm not really going to be able to make too terribly much progress. But, um, but as my wife just whispered from off stage, I mean, I was actually just about to say that, um, I could at least try to set myself up for a better, um, for a better state. I don't have that nice one-two I wanted to do of um, you know, using my sword here because Jen took out the whatever was there. But I've got a couple of special abilities I can do. Both Jen and I started with these. I've got three magic carpets and three uh, reshuffles. I'm going to use one of my magic carpets. I only get three for the entire game, but I use it, flip it, it's now out of the game. And what that means is I can instantly jump here, here, or here. And I'm going to jump here where Jen went, which means I've skipped this blocker. And now that I'm over here, um, this was, by the way, using that flying carpet was one of my special used treasure tokens, uh, free actions I can do whenever I want. Now I can actually start, uh, I can do what I wanted to do, which was use my net to, to capture the billy goat and get to the forest. So it's unfortunate. I was really hoping for like a 1-2 move, but I didn't get it, but at least I'll get a 1 move. So um, I'll use the net, jump here, take out the billy goat, and it gets added to my discard pile. Um, and now I've got more billy goat power, and I also have a special ability that billy goat gave me. So that was my turn. Um, and now I've got to decide which of these do I want to hold on to. Um, let's see. Now I don't want to really move around very much. I Actually, at this point, what I want to do is get to that spider as fast as I can. So I'm going to discard everything. Um, 
In fact, actually, I'm going to go one step further, just to try and get to that spider a little bit faster. If I discard all these right now, I'll, I'll draw two more and then three more from the deck. But to up my chances of getting the spider, now that I'm over in the forest, I'm going to use my other special ability, the reshuffle. I'm going to force a reshuffle right now um, before I, um, I'm discard. So there goes Jen, uh, the mysterious... Op oh, no. um, yeah, so she's going to reshuffle those cards um, along... Uh, she's going to reshuffle, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Because as you may have watched in my other videos, it's very, very difficult, I find, to uh, try to shuffle in a deck builder with only one hand. So um, Jen is shuffling, almost done, and ta-da, there we go. So, uh, hi, says Jen. So I've used uh, two special abilities, um, you know, both this, uh, you know, this reshuffle in the middle of a turn and the flying carpet. And now I'm just going to discard the three remaining cards in my hand and hopefully draw five cards, and one of them will be that big spider I'm hoping for. Uh, right off the bat, next turn is going to be very, very nice for me. Two, and a looking glass, three, four, five. So that is the end of my turn, and now we go on to Jen's turn. Um, let's see if I put this out of, out of the way. So meanwhile, over in Jenville, she's got a helmet, a bat, a, a cat's tooth, and a toothbrush, magic wand, and the wardrobe changing. At the beginning of the game, um, I didn't show it, but um, as part of setup, there are five artifacts to choose from at the beginning of the game. That's what this little icon means here, choose at the beginning of the game. Um, you know, it's a starter item. Jen chose the wardrobe of changing, which gives her a special ability. She can exchange any two creatures on the board. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. At the beginning of her turn, of course, she had to refresh the board, where a fen fairy came out, which needs fire to defeat it. Um, and, you know, adds more stuff to her deck. She doesn't have fire. She can't go that way. Let's see. Now, she needs a club. She does have a club, so she could go this way and take out the Enchantress. And then she has a tooth, so she could go this way and take out the spiders. Um, in fact, I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to have a little bit more adventuring and start filling up her deck a little bit more. So she takes the club, or the bat, boom, takes out the Enchantress, um, and then takes her, um, her cat tooth, boom, takes out the spiders, and goes one, two. Um, and, you know, all this stuff goes into her discard pile. And she's got another buck. Now she's made a lot of money, uh, so she'd really like to start spending on it, but she used her one action. Her one action this turn was to go adventuring, so that means she can't go shopping this turn. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, she doesn't need to um, you know, use her magic carpet or any of that stuff. So she just, you know, had a nice little adventure. Now, um, oh, and she didn't actually, ooh, actually, does she have an opportunity to do something clever? No, she doesn't. Okay. Yes, she does. Actually, okay. Now, um, before Jen went traveling, um, you know, rewind a little bit. First thing she decided to do was use her wardrobe of changing, which lets her exchange any two creature cards on the board. So she discards that. And what she did is she exchanged this spider card with this knight card. So these uh, swap. you will switcheroo. Then she went traveling, and as I already showed, she took out this and then this, and then she continued traveling because, as you recall, she has her magic toothbrush, which she used to take out the knight. So she had a very nice move. She got three cards added to her deck and another buck. She is now loaded with six bucks and uh, a knight. So that was actually a really nice move for her. Um, and then she's still got her um, helmet or you know, billy goat in her hand. She's looking around. Does she really need the billy goat? There's no quests that need it right now. There's um, you know, no creatures on the board that want it right now. So should she discard this or keep it? I think she'll discard it to draw back up to five. Which she got her dog, um, the, the pail of water, the candle, the net, and the broom. And that'll be her hand next turn. And so now we're back onto my turn. Uh, first thing I do is, of course, I refill the uh, board. A billy goat comes out and a troll, and a knight, and that knight and that troll both have gems for picking up extra cash. Um, so that's really swell. I mean, obviously, I'd like to go exploring and getting um, some more stuff. Oh, that's my discard pile. Where's my hand? My hand. Here it is. But it is time to complete a quest. I'm going to take my giant spider, which gives me two webs, or nets, as you might imagine, very thematically appropriate. I'm going to discard this. And because I am in the forest and I've discarded two nets, I have completed the quest, Repair the Tire Swing of the Tyrannical Child Tyrell. And this goes face down here. Oh, I also, I forgot to mention, the, the uh, quests that we're both racing to try to complete, they have these little plus ones, which means they're actually worth, um, in this case, two points. Completing this quest gives me three gems, one um, um, gauntlet, and in this game right now we're trying to play whoever gets eight um, cups or gauntlets first wins the game. Um, so I am now, but in fact, I got the one gauntlet and I have this plus one. So I actually have um, two towards the goal of eight. 
So I've actually just pulled into the lead. And now let's see what else I can do with the rest of my cards. Well, actually, there's nothing else I can do with the rest of my cards because I've done my main action of the turn. Instead of adventuring, I completed a quest. So even if I had fire or clubs, I wouldn't be able to move around at all right now. And what do I have? I've got, well, I've got the uh, Peaceful Dragon. Again, that's just a jump card. I'm just going to get it out of the way, which leaves me with my Looking Glass, which is my special card, um, my net, and my tooth. Let's see. And neither the net nor the tooth are going to help me with these things. Um, uh, but... Let's see, what, have I, what, have, what creatures have I picked up? Um, uh, no, I'm, okay, I'm going to discard these. Um, I'm going to hold on to this so I can have it in my, for my next hand. And so I'm just going to discard, which means I get to draw back up one, two, three, four. Okay, and that was the end of my turn. I completed a quest, and I've, draw, I've drawn up. Now it's uh, Jen's turn, so the first thing she does is she refills the board. And before, we've been refilling the creatures. I didn't take out any creatures, but we do put a new quest on the board which means you have to go to the hills, you have to bring two spiders, kind of similar to the one I had just done, where we snare the elusive hill hamster of harm, Harn, and bring him home in time for tea. Isn't that lovely? You can uh, really start to get a sense of just how charming and sweet and affable the game is. Um, you know, this is not a hard, he you know, hitting, heavy fantasy game. This is just a light, delightful, fun time. So anyway, so that new quest came out. It's Jen's turn. Um, let's see what her hand is. She's got the broom, the net. Arg. The candle and the dog. Well, first of all, she's going to use her dog to get a gem. Boink! So she's really loaded. And now, um, if we look where she is, she is surrounded by spiders and knights, which means she needs to be able to move, unless she wants to use a magic carpet. Um, she would need a magic wand or a tooth, neither of which she has. Um, but she could use a magic... Let's see. If she were to use her magic carpet, where could she go that would work out a little bit better for her, considering she's got the broom, the pail, the net, and the candle? Hmm, not uh, the broom. Yeah. Right, okay, and the magic carpet would only let her go here or here. It only lets you move one. But she could use multiple magic carpets if she wants to. Let's see, if she were to do that, she could then get... She's got the pail, and she's got the net, and... Ooh, that's nice. Okay, actually, no. She is going to use one of her magic carpets to just jump over these spiders and skip it. And now she's going to do her main action, which is going to be an adventure. And watch this. Are you surprised how Jen is pulling on to lead? I've done my one little measly quest, but look at what she's doing. She is using her pail of water to douse the witch. And then she is um, using her net to capture the billy goat. And then she is using her candle to uh, burn up the fan fairy. She made it all the way over here. So in one move again, she has just added three cards to her deck. Three sources of power. Um... When you know, good for her. So that all goes into her discard pile. She had a very nice turn. Um, she used one of her uh, um, magic carpets, and she's done. So she's still got the broom in her hand. I guess she'll uh, hold on to that, and so she starts drawing up. Uh, so she's now got her peaceful dragon, and then she herself shuffles off page. So we'll find out what else she gets. Meanwhile, while Jen's shuffling, I'm just going to go ahead and refill the board for my turn. A rabbit of unusual size, which you need a broom to take care of, comes out as does another witch, which needs a bucket of water. And is Jen done shuffling? Yes, she is. So the rest of her hand is a toothbrush, a pail of water, and her knight that she had recently added, which gives some sword power to her deck. Okay, now back to my turn. I'm over here. I've completed a quest. I am surrounded by the need for brooms and, um, what do you call it, uh, clubs. I do have a broom, so I could actually start making... Let's see what I got here. I got a broom, a toothbrush. Oh, a pail of water. Very nice. And a bat. Oh, quite nice. And the looking glass. Let's look at my special ability. My special ability... Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is going to be a good move for me. Hooray! Good moves for me. Um, right. What the looking glass does, it allows me to double the power of a symbol on one card that I'm going to play to move around the board, to subdue a creature. And so that means I could make this a double pail, or this a double um, club. Now that's important, because when you get further into the game, the creatures that start coming out are much, much tougher. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, come on. There we go. Like these vampire bats require two brooms to take care of, but they provide two, um, you know, and then like there's something else over here. I think it's probably a full dragon. Yeah, this is a full dragon, which will give me two flames, but requires two swords, I think, to take out. 
So um, this looking glass can be very, very useful to give me double power to take out those tougher creatures. But it does something else too. It lets me, um, like I said, I could turn this bat into a double bat. Now the important thing is, whenever you have two of a kind, whether it's a, a, like a double bat or two cards with a bat, whenever you have a pair, you can turn them, they're a wild, and you can turn them anything you want. So I'm going to take advantage of that right now. I'm going to take my broom and take out and sweep away the rabbits of unusual size. And I'm going to take the pail and douse this witch. Um, let's see. Yep. And that which puts me here and then here. And now, um, oops, I forgot to fill in a creature from last turn. Uh, there's another. Now, I, if I had a broom, I could go take out more rabbits of unusual size, or I could go this way and take out a troll if I have a billy goat. I have neither of those things, but if I take this looking glass and turn this looking glass, this bat is now a double bat. And remember, um, two of a kind means it's a pair. I'm going to say, or it's, it's a wild card, so this double bat actually counts as a billy goat, which lets me take out this troll and give me some money. And I get the troll. And now finally, way over here, there's a knight who I need a magic wand. Look at my last card, a magic wand. And boom. That was a very good turn for me. I cleaned house. I got three bucks. I got, um, I gosh, how much did I get? Oh, yeah, I got these guys over here. I got the witch. I got four new cards added to my hand. And basically ended up you know, going around the, the long ways around the, um, the world. Let's see. So uh, now it's Jen's turn. Or see, am I going to do anything else? No, I, I have no more cards. Um, so I'm definitely done. Now it's Jen's turn. Let's see what she's going to do. Well, first of all, she has to refill the board where there's, uh, she needs some fire to get past that fin fairy, a uh, sword to get past the baby dragon, um, billy goat to get past the troll, and a club to get past the enchantress. And now what does she have? What did she pull up? Um, well, first of all, she got her Peaceful Dragon. That's the junk card. Just get it out of the way. Uh, broom, Toothbrush, Pail, and Knight. What has she got? Uh, there's a Pail, um, which then leads to a uh, Dragon, which needs a Sword. Oh, look at that, which then leads... All right. Yep, that's a pretty... She's got a pretty nice move, too. Um, so she is going to uh, bah, 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 use her... Um, what does she need? Use... Or, oh, oh, whoops. Did I miscalculate? She needs flame to get past this fan fairy, um, which she does not have. So she is going to use her second um, flying carpet to come over here. And then she's going to use a sword to get past the baby dragon, and then a um, broom to get past. Yep, to get past the rabbits of unusual size, and then um, she's going to stop there. So she has picked up um, a couple of cards. Not bad. Good use of a uh, flying carpet, and uh, you know, and she's done. Now she's got. She's going to hold on to these. She's going to discard these. Um, well, neither of those are particularly good where she is. You never know what's going to pop up here. But let's see. Now I should have been paying more attention to what kind of creature she's been collecting. Um, because in addition to you know, right now we're just in the early stages where we're trying to build up our deck to get some more power and, and you know get um, you know before the tougher creatures come out and also before the tougher quests come out. Um, and in fact, I think, yeah, she's just going to, you know, hold on these last two cards, draw three, see what she gets, a billy goat, uh, her baby dragon she's gotten previously, and her cat. So that's the end of her turn. My turn now, I refill the board. Uh, oh, and the first of the tougher monsters requires two magic wands, it gives two swords, this griffin, which gets a gem, and um, a fairy, which doesn't get a gem. And now it's my turn, I'm way up over here. Now if I look around, if I want to get some more cards, I could take, I need a tooth or a club. All right, have I drawn um, for this next turn? Uh-oh, I think I need shuffling. Shuffling time, honey pie. So anyway, I forgot to draw uh, last turn, but let's go ahead and draw. I've got a billy goat and my dog, and Jen's still um, shuffling. Well, while she's shuffling, I know I'm going to use my dog to get another gem. Just going to do that guaranteed. Because um, there's an expansion um, available for the game that actually um, gives this shovel additional abilities where your dog can actually go around and dig up stuff and you know find buried treasures for you to give you know, new powers. But right now the dog in the base game is just pretty much, he's a good gem sniffer. Um, but anyway, so uh, that was uh, one, two, three, my looking glass, four, five. And here I am up there. Oh, I've got two billy goats and my looking glass. I should be able to do something nice with this. As you can see, I'm actually starting, I mean, I guess you could consider I'm starting to get, get a billy goat deck because I'm more powerful in billy goats now that I'm starting to get doubles, which, keep me, which I can actually start to build a strategy around too if quests come out um, that require billy goats. But also I can use these two billy goats as a wild card so I can go in any direction I want. 
Um, let's see. Or, and also I can, I can, well, so I can double this. So I actually have two wild cards. I can make two guaranteed moves wherever I want. Oh. Oh, shoot. Oh, in fact, I'm going to do something really cool. This is actually going to be nice. I'm going to, maybe it's a bit wasteful, but just to show off more features, I'm going to use my second of my three magic carpets. I'm going to use that to jump over the spider, come over to Jen's. And now there's this fairy, which requires two clubs to, uh, to get at. Um, and I, and I don't have two clubs, but I've got um, two wild cards. I've got this double sword because of my looking glass. And I've got double, so I'm going to spend all four of these as two wild cards to jump over here. And I've added um, the first double creature in the game, fairies. I've got double, um, uh, uh, you know, what do you call them? Uh, magic wands, which is important because I really want to complete my own quest there. So that was actually quite nice. So I pretty much used my entire hand to achieve that. So I draw back up, my giant spider, hooray, a peaceful dragon, blah, a candle, a bat, and a troll. And my turn's over, Jen's turn, she refills up. Uh, let's see. Now she would need two brooms to get past this vampire bat. One club or one tooth. And if we, I don't remember what her hand was. Let's look at it. Oh, she has a tooth. She has a sword. She has a billy goat or you know, head button thing. Pail of water. And a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the toothbrush or magic wand. She can't get very far, unfortunately, at this point. Or can she? She can get past that. And then she could... Uh, I think she's actually going to take a breather. Um, she, could, um, she could use this tooth to move one and get one more card, but she's already earned a bunch of cards. She wants to actually get some more stuff. She's actually going to stay here in the fields and she is going to go shopping, um, which means you know that's going to be her one action. And so what we do is, um, oh, and this is actually kind of nice. Another reason for her to go shopping is because she's got this billy goat. Now you notice these, ca these cards all have like their core ability, you know, this, um, you know, this, uh, this pail of water, the baby dragon makes fire, the cat has a tooth so he bites stuff. This billy goat will headbutt people for me, but it also has this special ability of the plus S. That means when I go shopping, I get to draw one additional card. So Jen's going to use that. She's going to discard the billy goat, um, which means when she draws, instead of drawing three cards like normal, she will draw four. She's at the artifact tower, so let's come over to the artifact tower, and she can draw four cards. One, two, three, and four. Let's see, what all she have here? Um, running out of table space. She's got some smelly alchemy, the deck of misadventure. I don't know if you heard Jen just giggled at the smelly alchemy card. She really likes that one. She is now laughing. Uh, the bitter brew and the bell of summoning. Now remember, Jen's been making a lot of money. She's got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got seven bucks. She can afford to buy multiples of these. And, um, you know, so she's going to buy a few things with seven bucks. Actually, I'm inclined to buy both of these two pointers, the Bell of Summoning, which is nice because it lets her draw additional cards on her turn, which, of course, as you can imagine, is very, very powerful. She's definitely going to buy that for two. Boink. And she's definitely going to buy the Bitter Brew. This is a mean card. There are some attack cards in the game, but they're not too terribly nasty. This one, choose one card from your hand um, or discard pile and place it in your opponent's discard pile. So this is a way for her to get rid of those, um, those cursed peaceful dragons. So she's going to buy that. And now she still has three bucks left over to uh, get either the Deck of Misadventure or the Smelly Alchemy. Reclaim any card from the discard pile and add it to your hand. Obviously, that's awesome because it means you can just use a card again, um, you know, even in the same travel. Or exchange the position of any two adventurers on the board if you want to get from one side of the room to another. I think she's going to buy the Smelly Alchemy because knowing her, she just loves Smelly Alchemy. What can you say? So the rest goes in the discard pile. She just bought Smelly Alchemy and she paid all her cash. So she got three very powerful cards, quite nice. Um, and now, so uh, she could hold on to these cards, um, or she could um, discard them to try and put herself in a better position next turn. None of these cards help her move where she is right now, so I think she's going to discard all of them and see what she gets. Uh, spatula, the net, which will get her past those spiders up there, um, the helmet, and... Um, oh, her Enchantress. That's going to hurt me a little bit next turn. But actually, you know what? Actually, before she does that, let me look at her cards again. Uh, she's not going to just discard them because there's something else you can do. I haven't done yet. Might as well demo this now. Instead of just discarding cards, you can, I believe the game refers to it as, what is it? Commit the cards to a quest. Um, so what she's going to do is, she had these four cards. She was just going to discard them all. She's not going to. Remember, she's got this quest where she has to go to the hills and use two flames to ignite the 11 huge pipes of the hovel of the hill giants. She is going to take this flame, this baby dragon, and instead of discarding it, she's going to put it here 
underneath this quest, which means she is holding it off to the side, and she's going to start collecting fire to do this quest. Also, that means it's taking this out of her deck, so until she does this quest, or she removes it and discards it from here, she's got one less flame to move around the world, but she's one step closer to completing this quest. Does she want to discard it anymore? The main quest, this um, one needs um, teeth, and this one needs webs. I think she's actually going to um, set this um, cat tooth aside as well. She's going to discard these, so when you want to commit a card to these quests, this gets into secret information in the game. She takes it, I don't know what it is, she puts it face down, and then puts this marker on top. So I know she has now committed a card to one of these two quests. I don't know which one it is, I don't know what she's actually interested in, but I know she's starting to try and put stuff aside. However, for all I know, um, that, at least I assume it's a tooth, it is, or a web. But you know, she could have put anything in here. She could have put her, um, her lousy, peaceful dragon just to get it out of the way. This is kind of like a dumping ground to get rid of stuff you don't want. Or even to bluff, to make somebody think that you're going for something when you're really not. But anyway, so she is actually starting to save up cards, um, her baby dragon to get this, um, this hill quest done, and the teeth to get this also in the hills done. So she can get, you know, on a turn, the flames and the other cat tooth, and she can get over to the hills. Um, she'll be doing really, really well. But anyway, so that was her turn. Uh, so she got rid of everything, and you know, she's drawn her hand. Now my turn, I don't have to refill the board because she didn't do anything. Instead, she went shopping. So it's my turn. What are my five cards? Um, two uh, you know, a troll and a bat. So I got two clubs, which is another wild card. A flame. Peaceful dragon, just discard it. And so again, I've got like two wild cards, basically. Now where am I? Ooh, two wild cards. I could get this vampire bat um, by turning them into two. Uh, so I'm, I'm starting to build up nice, powerful creatures. Or I could get this griffin and get two. Ooh, uh, what do I want? Oh, what do I want? What do I want? Oh, I want both of those things. I want them all. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so do I want to get more power for uh, magic wands or for brooms? Now, I think I've already, if I remember correctly, uh, let's see, didn't I already pick up a double? that would give me more magic wands? Yes, I did. I already get these fairies. So I already got a double magic wand. So I want another... Yeah, I know what... I think I do. Oh, well, okay. So really, I'm choosing between magic wands and double brooms. Let's turn this around. Also, I'm picking between a dollar and um, a special ability I could use later. I think I will... Uh, so I already have two uh, magic wands. You know, I mean, this is, you know, this is a deck building thing. Do I want to start building my deck more aiming towards specific icons and, you know, and, you know, getting more of those icons so I have more wild cards or do I want to have more variety? Deck building? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and start specifying. I'm going to go this way. So I'm spending all four of my wild cards, or all four of my cards that turn into wild cards, to basically add this buck and this griffin. So now I've got two. Um, oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The griffin, it, was, it gives me sword power. No, you know what? Screw that. I'm going to go the other way and get the vampire bats then. Um, because, oh, oh, wait a minute, oh, 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 is there something nice that happened there? No, all right. What I was going to say is, something else could have happened too um, in this turn. Didn't quite work out. Notice how I ended my turn on where Jen is. Um, now, I used, um, I see, I, that's the one I got. I used these two cards and these two cards. Oh, actually, yes, 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 yes. My original hand, before I picked up this vampire bat, let's go back, rewinding. Um, this was my original hand, wasn't it? One, two, three, four. Yes, it is. Five. I had a peaceful dragon. I kind of you know what I'm going to do, don't you? Um, okay, so I didn't just discard this peaceful, car, this peaceful dragon immediately. I'm holding on to it for a special reason. So I'm going to use this spider as a wild card to be the first of my brooms to shoo away the vampire bats. And then I'm going to um, use... Wait, can I not count? Ah, I don't... I think... I, sorry, folks. Math not really going very well. This is my second wild card to come up here. And... Um, Let's see. I, I honestly, at this point, don't remember if I had the candle left over or the uh, peaceful dragon left over. I'm going to say I had the, because it makes for a good example. So I've used those two to get over here. It means I've added the vampire bats, and I've got one card left over, this peaceful dragon. When you end your movement on the same turn, uh, in the same zone as somebody else, you can take one of your cards from your hand and put it into their discard pile. So I've just dumped my one peaceful dragon, my one clutter card, onto Jen. Um, and it picked up a nice card in the... Uh, in, you know, in the bargain. So then I draw back up one, two, three, four, five. Um, refill the uh, board for Jen. Oh, and hey, we have an event. Oh, that's not good for me. Mischievous Ravens. These come up every once in a while. Um, and in the, in the basic game, there's just the Mischievous Ravens, but there are a lot of other events you can get to with the expansion and whatnot. Um, player with the most gems loses half. If the player has four gems or fewer, he's unaffected. Jen has no gems. She just paid all her money. 
So which means I'm going to have to lose some gems, but I only have four, which if I'd had five, I would have lost two gems. So I got lucky. This event didn't hit me. If I'd had one more buck, it would have. And so then we just try, we, you know, so that event didn't happen. And then a dragon came up. So now it's Jen's turn. She's got five. I'll tell you what the first thing she's going to do. She's going to um, discard this card and use its special ability, the peaceful dragon icon, which means she is going to give me a peaceful dragon. And so my deck has started to clutter up again. And that leaves her with a net, a spatula, um, a helmet, and a, what else? And a bat, which she could then use. She could use the bat to come over here. Um, you know, she could use... Uh, or, yeah, or she, so, or, you know, she could stay where she is. Uh, no, but actually, she'd probably want to start moving around. She didn't really get a good chance to move around because she doesn't have any nice double creatures yet like I do. Um, so she might want to use her last magic uh, card. Oh, no, actually, well, she could use the bat to move across here and get another enchantress. But, and so the game goes. Basically, the game keeps going until one of us scores a certain number of points. In the quick version of the game, it's 8 points, but it could be 10 or 12. And for different numbers of players, there's different numbers. As it stands right now, I've got 1, 2 points. Jen has got no points. Um, and also, if you have extra quests, I, um, if I don't get rid of this, if I don't do this, this counts as negative 1. Um, so Jen's halfway towards completing this quest and this quest. She's kind of taking more of a long-term goal. She might not do much of anything this turn and instead might commit um, this web, this net, to... Um, so, so now she's starting to work on this quest and this quest and this quest. She hit me with the, uh, with the uh, Enchantress Beef Dragon, which left her with three cards. She um, used this to come over here to get another Enchantress, which will hit me with more Peaceful Dragons. That left her with two cards left over. She drew back up to five. Um, if she gets her dog for next turn. And she gets her wardrobe changing, which will allow her, gives her more control moving around. I think that gives kind of a rough idea of how it goes. We keep going until somebody scores, um, you know, a net total points for whatever uh, the target is, depending on how many players and, and the length of game you're shooting for. And that's Fantastica. So if I were to sum this up, I would have to say it is a sweet, lovely, charming little game. Um, it plays very fast, and I didn't really get a chance to show it here. But um, I, you know, you can get some really nice combinatorial moves by um, you know using you know magic carpets to jump someplace, and then use your wardrobe changing to switch two things around, and then end up like you know get, picking up four cards in one turn, and they're really powerful cards. They'll really, I mean, lots of little fun stuff like that, depending on how you build your deck. So you can make a deck that's you know um, you know focused on moving around. You could just you know what Jen's starting to do. You could start actually thinning your deck out by setting yourself up for quests. Oh, another thing I forgot. I never did it, but you know as your deck gets thicker and fatter and you know just more cumbersome because you can never get what you want instead of buying stuff at the shops I can take all this money and use it to sell basically trash the cards I don't want so I can start thinning my deck down to a really lean mean um, you know creature hunting machine so it does all those kinds of deck building things it has a really nice ebb and flow of you know searching around and exploring the world um, I think Jen has something she wants to say she's just standing there like she wants to oh she just wants to take the camera because she knows my hand is, is, is very cramped but I don't know, there's really not much to say. I mean, there are some additional um, elements to the game. There's these uh, hidden treasures that I think I mentioned. You know, your dog can dig these up. Um, there's also uh, like a whole other thing. Where are they? Um, oh, no, these are all the events. Sorry, I wasn't actually planning a show. Oh, there's these special delivery cards where everybody has a special delivery. Where if I go to the hills and deliver this, you know, this cute little uh, flavor text package, I can get money. If I get enough of this money, it translates into quest points. So, um, you know, there's, you know, there's even more um, death and complexity to add to the game. And then there's a ton of additional, um, you know, interesting uh, events. You know, free magic carpet rides, market day, where players can trade back and forth with each other. So there's a whole trading, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, so there's a Catan type thing. Um, um, different types of raisin, ra ravens that like make you swap cards, uh, unruly artifacts, draw two artifacts and tuck one away, and you know, lots of fun little things to add to the game. I was just showing you the bare bones basic game. But, um, you know, Jen and I played it a few times now and we really, really enjoy it. Um, it's, I think I said at the beginning, this is kind of what we would have hoped Mage Knight, the deck building game, would have been because we were really excited about that game, but it was just so overwrought and it just took forever. It took hours and hours and, you know, there's so much AP and just, you know, so many fiddly little rules that were so easy to forget, whereas this is just smooth and clean and elegant and fun. Um, and I don't know if you want to add anything, Jen. Uh, you don't have to turn the camera around. And she wants to say nothing. Uh, but I, that's really uh, pretty much sums it up. And that, look out, honey pie, is fantastic. Uh, thanks, everybody. I hope this was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please post. As always, I'm Richard Ham signing off. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.